Hi, my name is Atif Kamal. This is another workshop on logic and reasoning. This one is on identifying assumptions without causal indicators. If you have any questions or comments, you can relay them to me via Skype. My username is atif.kamal, or you can send me an email. My email address is projectoptimization at gmail.com. Now, the reason why I'm going over this um, is similar to why I went over how to identify cause and effect without causal indicators. Um, every argument you will encounter will either have causal indicators or will not have causal indicators. That means if you can identify assumptions regardless of whether they have causal indicators, that means you will be able to identify assumptions in every argument that you encounter because it doesn't matter whether it has causal indicators or not. So that's why I'm going over this so that you can know specifically how to identify assumptions and arguments um, regardless of their form. Okay. Now here is a very long excerpt. Uh, what I'm going to do is first I will read it once. Um, after I read it once I will go over it a second time but uh, in the second time that I read it uh, I will tell you how each part of this text functions to help you um, identify the assumption. Now I'm getting this excerpt from Business Week. It was written by Kyle Stock and Susan Banfield. The name of the article is Walmart's Best Deal, a Free Talent Show. Okay. Now I'll start reading it for the first time. So why so much Hollywood love for the Waltons? What does someone like Tom Cruise get out of the corporate circus besides perhaps some free aviator sunglasses and tidy whities well, if you're in the entertainment business, much of your pay is tied to Walmart already, directly or indirectly. Consider Lionsgate Entertainment, which sells movies, TV shows, and soundtracks. Walmart accounted for 38% of its disc, disc sales last year, according to Securities and Exchange Commission filings. Okay, now read it for the second time. Alright, so why so much Hollywood love for the Waltons? What does someone like Tom Cruise get out of the corporate circus besides perhaps some free aviator sunglasses and tidy whities? Okay, so I'll stop for a second. For that section of text, um, it's really useful just because it prompts you to ask why uh, these celebrities are coming to this show that uh, Walmart has for its corporation. And uh, you're fortunate to have that in this excerpt, but you cannot um, depend on always being told either um, orally or in writing to ask why uh, and I think it's important that um, when you read about an event or hear an event expressed by someone you ask why that event happened I find that when I ask why it kind of gets me in the mode to prepare to see a reason for uh, the occurrence of a particular event or an action so I just want to warn you that's something that you should do on your own, that you should practice doing very often. Alright, so I move on to the next bit of text. Well, if you're in the entertainment business, much of your pay is tied to Walmart already, directly or indirectly. Okay, so I'll stop right there. Now, that bit of text is the reason why there's so much Hollywood love, why there's so uh, many celebrities at um, Walmart's show, because they'll be paid directly or indirectly by being at the show. Okay, now I'll move on to the last bit of text. Consider Lionsgate Entertainment, which sells movies, TV shows, and soundtracks. Walmart accounted for 38% of its disc sales last year, according to Securities and Exchange Commission filings. Okay, so I'll stop right there. Now, this last bit of text, it serves to give um, very specific examples of how... Um, these celebrities would benefit by going to the show which presumably means that like because they go to the show they get access into Walmart stores by having um, their movies or their soundtracks um, um, displayed in their stores okay it's important to consider why all these celebrities are at Walmart show um, celebrities like Hugh Jackman, Jennifer Hudson, Kelly Clarkson, John Legend, and Tom Cruise. None of these stars got paid to appear. Uh, presumably they have something to gain, otherwise they're wasting their time. And they're not there for philanthropic uh, interests or pursuits because this show is for their corporation, Walmart's corporation. It's not for um, 
like helping the poor or like curing a disease and so forth. So presumably they have something financial to gain. So if the reason why um, Walmart has someone like Tom Cruise, someone in the entertainment business, being at the show is because his pay is directly or indirectly tied to um, to Walmart, then every celebrity who is at the show must have their pay directly or indirectly tied to Walmart. And that's how I get this assumption. Every star who appeared at Walmart's show has much of their pay directly or indirectly tied to Walmart. So that means Hugh Jackman, Jennifer Hudson, Kelly Clarkson, John Legend, and Tom Cruise would have their pay directly or indirectly related to Walmart. Okay. Now you'll notice I have a more uh, generic assumption here. Because it's more generic, um, it may or may not apply in every situation. It just depends on the particular situation. Um, it's more generic in terms of saying, like, instead of saying every star who appeared at Walmart, I just say every celebrity not paid to appear um, at a corporate show. Okay, instead of just Walmart, I just say corporate has much of their pay directly or indirectly tied to that corporation. Again, I say corporation instead of Walmart. Now, this could apply, but you just have to be careful in terms of uh, applying this assumption to the right situation because not every corporate show is just for the corporation. Um, my speculation is that there are corporations out there that do shows. Uh, because that corporation has a philanthropic interest um, to pursue. I would imagine that's true for some corporations. Okay, now here is another example for you to do on your own. Instead of reading it twice, I will only read it once. In that one time that I do read it, um, I will highlight which part of this um, massive text is the um, cause or the uh, reason and which part of it is the effect or the conclusion. Okay, and also I'm getting this excerpt from Business Week. It was written by Justin Bachman. The name of the article is A Rare Recall Standoff as Chrysler Questions Safety Issue. Okay, so if you need time you can pause the video to read this and um, also what you want to do when you do this is you want to um, write down very specifically uh, what is the cause and then write down what is the effect. You want to make that clear for yourself and then based on what you determine is the cause and the effect or the uh, the reason and the conclusion you want to determine what the uh, assumption would be. Okay. So if you need more time you can pause the video otherwise I will start reading the excerpt. And I'll start right now. In a November 2011 letter to Sergio Marchione, Chief Executive Officer at Chrysler and its parent, Fiat, the Consumer Safety Group called the Grand Cherokee, that's a uh, Chrysler Jeep, a pinto for soccer mobs, charging that the model had led to more fire deaths than the notorious Fords that were linked to gas tank explosions and recalled in 1978. Okay, so that would be... Uh, that would be the effect, the conclusion, which is basically just saying that the Grand Cherokee Jeeps have led to a lot of fire deaths. That's how you could say it in a very short sentence. Okay, and now here is the uh, the cause or the reason. The NHTSA found that the fuel tank placement on Jeep models behind the rear axle and high off the ground make it more likely to catch fire in rear end accidents. So why did the Grand Cherokee um, Jeep lead to um, a lot of fire accidents, fire deaths? Because it had the rear axle, or had the fuel tank behind the rear axle and high off the ground. So if it's true of this Chrysler Jeep, this type of Chrysler Jeep, then presumably it would be true for all types of Chrysler Jeeps. So then, if that is true, this is the assumption you'd get, which is all Chrysler Jeep models which place the fuel tank behind the rear axle and half the ground are more likely to catch fire in rear end accidents. So if you look at another type of Chrysler Jeep, such as the Chrysler Aspen, if that has the fuel tank behind the rear axle and half the ground, then something you should be considering is perhaps 
this other type of Chrysler Jeep also is more likely to catch fire at rear end accidents. Now again, if you want to be more generic, you could apply this to just Jeeps in general and say the assumption is all Jeep models, regardless of the manufacturer, which place the fuel tank behind the rear axle half the ground are more likely to catch fire in rear end accidents. Now that is just an assumption, it's something we are taking for granted. You still have to verify whether it is true or not. Okay? So just be careful about when you formulate these assumptions and which ones you choose to believe in or not believe in. Okay, now if you want more practice, you can go to yahoo.com, you can go to Alternet, uh, Huffington Post, Business Week. Those are the ones that I go to. You don't have to go to those. Whichever one, whichever uh, website you want to go to to look at articles is totally up to you. Based on the article that you choose, you will find a selection of text that implies a relationship of cause and effect. That's essential. And then within that selection of text, you're going to identify an event or an action and then the reason or the cause for that effect or that event or action. Okay, And then um, based on what you identify as the reason, you'll want to identify, you'll want to um, apply the reason in a way that is more generic. So I did that with the Jeeps instead of saying um, the Grand Cherokee Jeeps led to more fire uh, fire deaths because of the rear axle and it was half the ground behind the fuel tank, yada yada yada. Um, I said all Jeep models. I said all Chrysler Jeep models um, and gave the the reason. Okay. Um, instead of saying um, instead of just saying Tom Cruise went to uh, this corporate show because his pay was directly or indirectly tied to uh, Walmart. I said every star, not just Tom Cruise, who appeared at Walmart um, has much of their pay directly or indirectly tied to Walmart. Okay, so you do the same thing but for the own selections of text that you choose. Alright, now next up I will go over um, basically a complex uh, logical operation for making predictive plans. When I say complex, all I mean is that I will be using more than one um, logical principle and or uh, operation to show you how to make um, plans and predictions. Okay, and also something really important I'm going to talk about at the end of the next video is uh, basically how the next episode, the next uh, workshop will be the last one that I do that pertains to logic. I have not yet done any that have pertained to reasoning. Um, all the videos that you've watched um, and heard from the very first to the last one, which is the next one, uh, will have pertained or did pertain to just the clarity of words, but more so uh, logic, both directly and indirectly. Okay, so I'm going to go. I'm going to talk about uh, what my plans are in terms of going into reasoning uh, for workshops. And then I'll also talk to you about a change to the channel. It's a good change. Um, it's about some new types of videos that I'll offer to you. Um, but I'll talk about that in greater detail in the next video. All right, thank you.